What's going on, guys? Isaiah here with Goo Gaming, and today I have Logan here with me, and we're going to go over what we believe to be the top 10 cards coming out of Darkwing Blast next week. Now, this set is going to be dropping right as YCS Minneapolis starts, and there's going to be a lot of cards in this set that are probably going to shake up the meta, and we're going to talk about those today and tell you guys what we think are the best cards coming out of the set. Let's get into it. All right, guys, so starting things off, we do have Logan here, and we're going to start off our 10th best card coming out of Darkwing Blast, we believe. I can't pronounce this, but it's the Duck. The Duck and the new Vernus Slip cards, a lot of these cards are really good. Um, the worst part about them is they lock you into Earths, but decks like Emancipator and Earth Machine can play them. And I think this card's actually pretty strong. What do you think about this card? What do you think about the Duck? I think a card's really good. It searches any card in the archetype. And it can, like, reborn anything from your grave. You know, it's really good. Uh, also, um, it's kind of cool that these cards, like, they only lock you into monster effects. So, like, you can, like, make, like, like Apollo and stuff, but you just can't use their effects that turn, which is pretty cool. So, like, if you're, like, at Emancipator, you can put up, like, a Quackamere Guardian. And it can like it can negate like cards like Nibiru, and then you can set up your negates that you're going to use on your opponent's turn, which is pretty cool. Yeah, like I think the card's really cool, and I think Adam Emancipator keeps getting like small cards like this and the Turtle from the last set, and they just keep like making the deck just a little bit better each time. And I think it's just a matter of time for the deck actually breaks into a tier one deck. Oh yeah, it wouldn't surprise me at all if I saw some people top them with this card in their deck. So our number nine card is Muck Rucker from the Underworld. This card's pretty good. It can be used as a link material to turn its link summoned. If a monster would be destroyed by battle by card effect, you contribute a fiend monster instead. And then you can target a fiend monster in your graveyard, except itself, discard a card, and if you do, special summon that monster. Also, you can not special summon monsters for the rest of the turn except fiend monsters. It's kind of cool because um, that's not cost. Discard it so it could trigger all the Dark World effects. Yeah, and then with the new Dark World stuff coming out, I think this is like predicting new stuff for it. I think this card's going to be really cool in a lot of decks. It's also cool that it's generic, right? So like yep. any deck can play it. I wouldn't be surprised if this was a Starlight. All right, the next card that we want to talk about is Spellbound. A lot of people are hyped by this card. I like this card a lot. I don't know if it's generically good right now because it's not the best against tier. But I think the card is, I've seen some people say it's a power crypt D barrier. And I think it's, a, it's close, you know, like the card, the way it stops tributing is really good against like flu. Um, and it stops link summoning. So I can see that. My biggest thing is it's a spell card, it's a quick play spell. I feel like, I don't know, I kind of like it. I like this card. One thing I like about the card is going second, it kind of has some utility if your opponent ends with uh, IP Mascarena. Or, yep. like, for example, if they're doing, like, things with Goaties, how, uh, with the, new Go the new TCG exclusive archetype, if, you know, they're synchroing on your turn, you can activate Spellbound on your turn, you know, they can't use their monsters to synchro, and then they don't have any eruptions, you just, you know, get, be able to play freely. Yeah. And I've seen a lot of people are starting to build their decks to make IP at the end of their turn. And if you just, you know, chain Spellbound to it, it's just going to, like, shut it off. Which, yeah, it's kind of scary. That's Yeah, that's something cool. Like, that's something this card could do that D-Barrier can't. You know, if you have D-Barrier going second against a board, it doesn't do anything. At least Spellbound trades with an IP, an IP interruption, right? I definitely think this card is something you want to look out for. Next card is World Sea Dragons Elantis. Uh, this card's really cool. You know, it's a Link 4 that you can use 1 plus effect monsters. So if you use something like Nightmare Griffin, uh, you use all your negates from Apollo, they negate your access code, whatever, you can just slap this guy on top as like a Link 1 um, and be able to summon this guy. It lets you banish everything until and then resummon everything. But it's cool because you get to choose the position. So you can even use it to like break boards and stuff because you can summon all of your opponent's monsters and face down defense and then just beat over them. Um, and then it has, like, the co-linked uh, pop effect in the battle phase, which isn't as important. This card's really cool. Uh, I really like it in the new Pendulum deck, and uh, it's really good to like, Marincess and stuff. What do you think of this card? I think it's going to catch a lot of people off guard. Um, I don't think it's going to be used a lot for the battle phase effect with the co-linking and everything, unless some people just, I don't know, break Goki or something again, and you start doing all that stuff. But I think the fact that you can reset, like, on summon effects that aren't once per turn is really cool. 
one thing to uh, add into the coat linking stuff, though, where you can resummon everything, you can make this thing co linked. Like if you have another late monster almost yeah. every time. So that's pretty cool. Destructive Daruma Karma Cannon. That's a mouthful, and this card is amazing. I like this card. I don't think it's like broken, but I'm glad that we're getting this card as a. It's an exclusive, right? Yeah, it's a TCG exclusive. Yeah, I think it's really cool. I'm excited. That's a normal trap card, so you can play it with like the labyrinth card. Which maybe I don't. I don't know if this card itself is going to push labyrinth to the next level, but I'm glad they're giving cards that you can play with the labyrinth cards. And I think this card think, is going to be played a lot. Yeah, I think this card is honestly probably a better torrential tribute. Um, just because of the fact that you can draw it going second, and you it like your opponent doesn't have to summon a monster, right? Like you could just like activate this. If they have leak monsters, they go to the graveyard. Everything else gets flipped face down. It's pretty cool in that regard. Um, and you can keep your own monsters if you build your deck correctly and not summon links. Yep. I think this card's going to be something you really need to watch out for because, especially going into the ICS, I feel like there's going to be people playing this card. Next is Majesty Pegasus, the Draco Slayer. We just chose the best uh, Draco Slayer. Um, this card's insane. Uh, you know, I think this was probably one of the best Pendulum cards ever, pr or Pendulum Monsters ever printed. Um, so it can just, it's Pendulum Effect, it can add any Draco Slayer from your deck to your hand. Then it's optional, you can destroy a card in your Pendulum scale. Uh, that's really cool because another one of the Draco Slayers that come out that we'll cover later in this video, um, he can summon things from decks, so you could trigger that. And then it's Monster Effect, it's a hand trap that keeps your guy from being targeted, and then it can search any field spell in the game, and that's crazy. Yeah, I think this is going to give Pendulum a little bit of a push to maybe bring it back into the game a little bit, even without Electromite. Oh yeah, especially, like, the fact that this card could just search any field spell, I think, just gives it, like, so many options. Because, like, you can literally just, like, you can even add different archetypes if, like, they have enough synergy, right? Like, you can search, like, the Fear Element field spell, you could search, like, anything, right? Yep. Be able to bridge the engines. I missed it, mine. Just saying. Just like with the Draco Slayer, we are only going to talk about one card of each archetype, even though there's probably multiple. Uh, for example, we have Lulu here, but we also have Scream. Uh, we didn't want to put multiple cards in the same engine in the top 10. Uh, but for tier elements, we do think Lulu is probably the best card. Um, I'm glad we're getting this. It gives a lot more defense and push to the deck, being able to shovel kick close back without having to like just make another kick close or Draco Stapelia. Um, and also being able to play around Nib with this, and it resets itself. I think this card is insane. I think this card, like, changes how Tier Element plays. You don't, you don't have to fear to be room. You can often summon this card before the fifth summon. Even if you do negate with the card, you can trigger another Tier Name or summon itself back from the graveyard. The fact that it's water, it plays around the Bistial monsters. Um, it also has a cute little effect that keeps your other water monsters from being, or your aqua monsters from being destroyed by, uh, battle. Don't think that's going to come up too often, but you do, if you do have a toad, they can't just enter battle phase and kill it. They have to kill us first. Um, I think the card is insane. I think it's one of my favorite cards of the set. Yeah, this card's, I love this card, and it's going to be beautiful as a starlight. Next we have is Bistial Ma uh, Magna, Magna Hut. These names, man. Uh, <laughs> again, like we we are only gonna put one card of each video because if not, we probably have like five bestial monsters in this top ten because these cards are insane. Uh, they sure they're probably gonna be in everyone's deck going into the YCS. But if you don't know what this card does, basically a DD Crow for a lighter dark monster. Uh, and it's only a quick effect of your opponent controls a monster, and this one can add a dragon monster from your deck to your hand during the end phase. Um, that's insane. Like, there's nothing much to say about this. If you play this card in Dragon Link, you can just search Engine. Even if you don't play it in Dragon Link, you can just play a different Bestial Monster and another DD Crow, as well as 2500 Body. The card's just absurd. Yeah, these cards kind of scare me. I think if you don't build your deck to play around the Bestial Engine going into the YCS and you're playing something like Tier Elements, then you're you're really just asking to lose, because they literally just negate all your effects, all your fusion effects. Our next card is Sprint, which a lot of people are excited for. This card is really strong. Uh, being able to just dump any level two, I think it's, in my opinion, it's probably going to be, probably going to be better in decks like Tier than in Sprite. Obviously, it's going to be good in Sprite, but being able to dump a Merly, I think it's just insane. 
Um, the bounce effect obviously is pretty good too. Uh, the only downfall to this card, I really think it's the only downfall to this card, is only being able to use one of their effects per turn. Yeah, I think the fact that this card could bridge the engine between sprite and tier is insane because like used to you can only like go from the tiers into the sprites right because you could only go into like use merly to make the elf and then bring back the merly and then make gigantic and that was usually how you got into your sprite engine but now you can use the sprite engine to get into your tier engine i think that's super super cool also there's another thing you can do with this card but this is a little bit more of like probably like a casual thing but you can set a card like cyberstein from your deck to the graveyard, and then use, like, Elf to reborn it, and this card doesn't lock you in, so you could, like, summon cards like Exterio or do FTKs or whatever with this card. It's actually really cool. That's kind of terrifying. Not gonna lie about it. And our number one card is... I'm not even gonna try to pronounce this. You guys can read Fenrir. Everybody knows what <laughs> Fenrir does. You know, he's a power crypt paker toss if I've ever seen one. You know, show no monster, special summon him. So he's an extender going first. He can search another... another card of his archetype, another monster of his archetype, which he can search himself for some reason. Don't know why they did that. And then whenever he declares an attack, or your opponent activates a monster, you can just banish a face-up card that they control face down. Or, that's just insane. Like, Thank he's God it seven. targets. <laughs> yeah, thank God it targets. <laughs> they couldn't have made this card any better almost. Like, he's level 7, so like, somehow, if you wanted to do, like, luckily the banned Hulk, but you could do, you could do like, <laughs> you know, Red Rose stuff with this card, it would just be absurd. Like, this card's insane. I think everyone knows this card's the best card in the set. Um, I don't, I don't even know what else to say about this card. Yeah, if this card was a secret, I think it would have been $150 plus. Because this is going to be a staple in almost every deck. Yeah. And, like, the thing is, this archetype's not even bad anyway. So if you wanted to add more of the other cards into the archetype, it wouldn't even be crazy. Because they all have the effect that they could just special summon themselves. Plus... The decks like this archetype's getting more support, and you know the you know the monster that can search any of the other monsters is probably gonna be a three of. So this card's just insane. Yeah, I would definitely try to get you a playset of this, regardless of what you're doing right now. So the other cards that we didn't put into the list because we didn't want to put a million Bastide monsters into the uh, the top ten. Uh, you know we have Druid Worm, Lubelion, Sorinir, and then the Branded Continuous Spells and Traps. They kind of all go in the same deck. Um, Druid Worm is the one you're probably going to be the most familiar with uh, because he's played by beside Mag Magna, Magna Hut. Um, and he just, if he's sent to the graveyard, he can target a monster, your, especially a monster your opponent controls, and send to the graveyard. Um, that's not by your opponent's card effect, so if you just link this card away after DD Crow on your opponent's card, it just breaks their board, uh, which is actually insane. Um, and then Lubelion, he's just good in the pure branded uh, uh, the Bastille deck. Um, this card can set the contiguous cards for the deck, and then Sornir can send them. So they're all they're all insane. Uh, this is kind of like a package thing, um, Sornir and then the branded guys. Uh, so yeah, the next card is Scream. I think this card is extremely, extremely good. I think this card is definitely underrated. I haven't really seen anyone talk about this card, but if a monster is normal, special summon white control a tier element, you can send the top three cards of your deck to the graveyard. Also, your all face up monster your opponent controls lose a 500 attack. But that card, that effect is just nice. That's not really the main effect. But the million three is really good, especially in the pure version of tier, like with the hand traps, because if you summon Rhino Heart, you can chain block with Scream to mill three. And then, like, let's say they effect go or imperm, and then you miss. If they summon a monster, you get to mill three more cards. So you get to mill six with your Rhino effect, which is really strong. Um. But another line of play you could do is you could search this card off of Kit Kalos if you have the uh, planet field spell, the tier element field spell. And then you get to mill three cards in your combo, and then you can use planet to pop it, and this card can search any trap whenever it's sent to the graveyard by card effect. So you can just search whatever tier element trap you're going to search with Kit Kalos anyways. So basically it's just a, fill, a free mill three in like a regular tier element combo if you open planet, which is really strong. Um, the, both the Draco Slayers, like I said, Ignis, if he's destroyed by card effect, um, you can just special summon a Draco Slayer from your deck, and it becomes a tuner, so it combos with Majesty Paladin, like I was talking about earlier, and then Dynamite can summon them from the Pendulum Scale, which is just insane. Um, the Sprite, uh, Double Cross, this card's really good, uh, it's Graveyard Interaction, it's just another piece of interruption that you're, that you can search in your Sprite decks. I don't know if it's gonna be played that much, but I definitely wanted to cover it, because... 
you know, some people play two smashers, so I could definitely see people playing one double cross, one smashers, just to have an option of another effect to search. I'm sad this card didn't get into the top ten, but La Lady of the Labyrinth, um, I definitely think this card could have gotten to the top ten. This is kind of like the multi-faker of the archetype that's also kind of like a towers. So it just can't be targeted or destroyed by card effects if you have sec, uh, if you have a control of set card. And then you can set card from your deck. Card's insane. And then, you know what it is. got to add a black wing. I think Shamal's probably the best one. He can play the continuous uh, spell from the deck, Black Feather Whirlwind, and then he can also add cards from your graveyard to your hand, which is just crazy. And then the last card, we got to add in a Goaty Monster. I think this one's probably the best one. It can just banish a level 6 or lower fish from your deck. That's crazy. So it automatically has a plus 1 because they all summon themselves. And then if it's sent to the graveyard, uh, you can just banish a fish and then add another fish from your deck with an equal or lower level. Card's just crazy. But yeah, these are the cards that we didn't cover. Um, I'm really excited for Darkwing Blast, and I hope you guys are too. Alright guys, so that's what we think the best cards coming out of Darkwing Blast are. I'm really excited for this set. I'm really excited for the format to change just a little bit, just to add kind of more like some more power and more diversity with the decks that are out. Um, not ready for Fender. I like the card. It's going to be weird playing with it. I remember what it was like playing with three Pankatrops in every deck, and Fender is just a better Pankatrop, so I'm excited to play with that. If there was any cards that came out of Darkwing Blast that you are excited for that we didn't talk about today, let us know below. We're about to hit 1,000 subs, so make sure you guys hit that smash, that subscribe button, the like button. Once we hit 1,000 subs, we're going to do a massive giveaway. But that's it for today's video, guys. We'll catch you in the next one. Peace.